Uh, this is, uh, I've had this presentation before. I modified it slightly to reflect uh, um, my changed opinions on it. Uh, who here knows what an ICO is already? Oh, it's interesting. Um, would somebody like to give me their explanation? Sorry? Yes. Yes, like I was saying, initial Lambo, oh, no, wait a minute. Initial coin offering, yeah, that's, that is correct. So, uh, how does this differ from an IPO, which is what? All right, all right, I'll try to remember. So the closest comparison, of course, for funding purposes is a, a company going public, so that's an IPO. And the main difference between ICOs and IPOs is that the other one is heavily regulated, while the other one is nearly not regulated at all. But the regulation is coming, and the, the lack of regulation maybe has led to this kind of like a Wild West type of uh, ICO here, ICO there, and to try a, a, a lot of uh, get rich quick schemes, which is all, all, of course pans out perfectly with game theory because such a thing is possible, it is taken advantage of, and then there will be a lot of, uh, lot of scammy projects that uh, just try to take advantage of uh, people wanting to get rich quick, maybe take their money. There have been a lot of uh, exit scams, and that's why uh, these projects will be, in my opinion, re heavily regulated, probably starting this year. And also one big reason why, why the regulators are coming after ICOs is because they can. It's an important thing to keep in mind. Uh, most of these ICOs are centralized, so they're actually companies that can be shut down by regulation. Whereas decentralized protocols that we're going to talk about later um, are resilient to that because there's no central office, for example. There's no office and CEO of Bitcoin that you can throw into, throw into jail. So that's the, definitely a strength of decentralized organization. But yeah, like somebody here said, uh, it's kind of like a crowdfunding method. And I would say it is the future a crowdfunding method and a way for companies to, uh, so, so to speak, go public, hopefully with a little bit less friction and more inclusion. So this, this way, owning shares, for example, in any company in the future should become more accessible. Uh, hopefully the regulation will pack, pack this up as well, but at least in ideal world. So what it allows for everyday people to do is become a VC, so that, that means uh, venture capitalist, essentially. Based on their own, um, own levels of comfort, they, they are fe uh, feeling uh, comfortable investing. For example, uh, it's not so easy to invest 10 euros on some company via IPO, probably won't be worth the trouble. But if you invest 10 euros worth of Ethereum in an ICO project, then that's, that is uh, much more doable and it's, it can be done. And, and there's no really uh, upper limit unless there's uh, one that is set, which normally is a good idea because if you don't set a um, limit for how, how many tokens or coins are distributed in an ICO per uh, person, then you might end up with uh, more centralization because somebody might scoop up most of the tokens. And I think this happened with uh, BAT, for example, because that was like an uh, online advertisement token that uh, of course there was a huge interest in advertising companies to scoop up some of that token just in case. So it led to a kind of a centralized, uh, centralization problem, which I, I do believe they solved now, but just uh, an example. So of course it creates a lot of excitement. It's a whole new way to raise money for everybody. Basically anybody can um, read an article and, and if you have any knowledge in coding, uh, basic knowledge, you can pretty much put up your own ICO rather, rather quickly. And some ICOs and some projects don't even have a white paper, which is normally what is used to outline the idea and, and flesh out the, some of the technicalities. And some projects don't even have that, and they can raise uh, tens of millions of uh, dollars worth of cryptocurrency, which is very interesting. And of course, it lures a lot of uh, people who are only after uh, the quick money. That's certainly something to take into account while you assess a project. Because a lot of them can be useless. I mean, that's the best case scenario, that they are useless. Uh, but they can also be even harmful. There's been uh, flat out scams that their own, only purpose was to generate as much uh, money from the people as possible and then just uh, 
shut down the website and, and go on a vacation. This has happened many occasions, many projects. And of course, one reason why I don't maybe hear of some, uh, all of the projects is because people probably don't want to let other people know that they, they were investors in this kind of thing. So be careful, do your research. And I would like to share, I already talked about regulation, I, I, I would like to share my method of assessing projects. It's, uh, it's a very fast one because there's uh, thousands of different projects. And, uh, it, well, I, I like, I like this uh, method. You might have your own, uh, but hopefully this uh, method can be useful for you as well. So I call it the PTS. The P comes from purpose. So I would first assess if the project, what is the purpose of the project? Why does this project exist? And more often than not, you will see this uh, buzzword salad, which includes uh, hit, hits like uh, blockchain decentralized, blah, 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 whatever, in blockchain, bananas on blockchain, and you know, like Datecoin and stuff like that, like Tinder on blockchain. There's uh, cer certainly a lot of things that we can coffee on the blockchain. We can put all things on the blockchain, apparently. But uh, that is not the case, of course. I'll talk about the technical implications of that later. But the purpose. Here's some examples that I've gathered of different uh, projects that have purpose. Bitcoin, obviously, has the uh, purpose of st storage of value. And it also works as the liquidi liquidity pool of the other uh, projects because everything is still mostly all the assets are still traded against Bitcoin so of course and, and it has inspired all these other projects that's why they are called normally altcoins in, in opposed to Bitcoin so very clear use case there Steam is another interesting one uh, it's a social media uh, token so what it tries to do is to be a forum and a social media that rewards the content creators so the users rather than the advertisers so there's no advertisements, and the system works on, um, uh, based on investors' um, belief in the system that it will be the next Facebook or the next Reddit or whatever. Regardless uh, of the opinion, it's an interesting thing, and certainly uh, has a real-life use case if you think about how popular social media is nowadays. Well, Ethereum, I'm sure most people here know Ethereum. Who knows Ethereum? All right. Who doesn't know Ethereum? I don't. Nobody? All right. So that uh, pretty much uh, sums it up. It's the second, I would say, second uh, best known cryptocurrency. And how it differ differs from Bitcoin is that it's a smart contract platform. And, and basically, I, I think it would, it's more accurate to say that it's an ICO platform because it, it allows these other projects to be easily put up. And then you, they use uh, Ethereum as the, as the gas, basically, to run those networks. And they are all recorded in the Ethereum blockchain. So that's uh, most, most projects are tokens. They are not, uh, this is uh, one differentiation between uh, coin-only projects and then uh, token projects. So coin has normally their own blockchain, whereas the tokens are part of uh, uh, tokens in, a, in another blockchain. Uh, Monero is the, is the most well-known well privacy coin, so it has that function. If you need completely confidential transactions, which people will, in my opinion, always need, uh, that's, uh, at the moment, I think, the go-to option. There are several other ones, of course, that are competing ones. I've listed NX Solar here, which is uh, my project. That's uh, here because it's uh, uh, tokenizing real-life assets, in this case, solar power plants, and the ownerships uh, and, and uh, investing uh, goes to the blockchain uh, via tokenization. So that's something I'm going to talk about later. I think that's uh, in the future, all the ownerships will be recorded in blockchain. I mentioned Ethland as well. Um, they are here to talk, and the reason why I mention it because it's rare for a project um, at this early early um, stage to have a functioning uh, working product, which Ethland does, and they do uh, peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency lending. So, uh, and it's a Finnish project as well. And Stani is uh, here today to talk about the project as well. And yeah, I, I suggest you check it out. It's very, very interesting. Of course, it's still in development, but at least they have a working product, which is way more than you can say from 90, 95% of ICOs. And of course, this, uh, they had their ICO last year already. So, um, And Golem is here mentioned because they do something um, kind of unique also. They are sharing computing power to uh, use the, uh, the power of mass computing uh, cloud computing to solve some complex uh, problems like let's say DNA analysis or uh, 3D rendering and stuff like that that normally takes a lot of uh, 
computing power. So Golem uh, allows you to rent out your comp idle computing power to participate in the cloud network and get paid in, in Golem. That's a clear use case. Walton is here also, also mentioned that's a supply chain token to, for tracking the supply chain from, uh, from the beginning to the end. And, and also, um, I, I think there's like this masternode system that rewards, uh, rewards the users as well. A clear use case. There's others as well. So if the token doesn't have a clear purpose, then if the purpose is just to use some passwords to try to lure you in, uh, into some venture that really does, it, it sounds like a nice idea, but really doesn't have any use case, which is, um, I would say, majority of the projects. So uh, you want, probably want to think, is this just an idea that uh, somebody came up with that it would be neat to have? Are we creating a solution for a non-existing problem? Uh, would be the question. And, and uh, if the answer is yes, then I would just move on to next project. I won't even go to the next steps which are <clears throat> the T stands for team. So of course every project is compri comprised of the team and uh, I will list community here first because I think the community is the most important uh, team member because that way you will recruit new members. We've done this with uh, two projects and we've organically grown because people want to work in the project and uh, not because we are hiring or paying a huge amounts of money. Uh, you get word of mouth because when people become believers in the project, uh, it spreads like a virus. That's essentially what you want from a project. Really good idea and a team that is committed. Their attitude is more important than their education, how many uh, master's degrees they have or, or doctorates, it doesn't matter. What matters is their vision and their uh, conviction to realize that vision. And that's uh, also rare. And once you uh, get into touch with the team, you will quickly realize if they are in it for actually changing some things, making things better, or for a quick buck. So that's something to check, the attitude. And also leadership uh, goes, goes with attitude. Uh, we talk about that a little bit later, what, what it means to work in a flat organization, and uh, what it means to lead by example. Uh, the the hier times of hierarchical ways to organize a company, I think, are, are behind us already. And then there's marketing. You can't forget marketing. No matter how, how good your product, project is, you do need marketing. Even though I wrote here, a group project doesn't need a marketing budget. But you still need to let people know that you exist. Because otherwise, no matter what kind of project you have, you won't get anywhere because you do need actually people to do the, do the heavy lifting and put in the work and the hours. So uh, I would say there's a difference between marketing. If, if they only have, like some projects, they only have a huge marketing budget, they have a huge amount of partnerships and advisors, what that normally means that they had a huge marketing budget and mostly they are comprised of maybe marketers and, and, and they're just basically trying to make a good looking project uh, that uh, inspires people to invest rather than having an actual working product. So yeah, be aware of really good looking things and especially if somebody's promising uh, returns because nobody can promise you what happens tomorrow if somebody says that they guarantee you some profit 100% scam every time so marketing done right and if those two checks are, are crossed then I go into assessing the sustainability does this uh, project thrive under competition or will it be replaced easily by uh, by a competitor for example what kind of network effects has it has it uh, uh, accumulated, like for example, Bitcoin has huge network effect because so many people use Bitcoin already. So, so that means, uh, means automatically each Bitcoin is more valuable because of the network effects. And same applies to other projects as well. And once they reach the critical mass, they become infinitely more, more useful and that, that way they, they can really explode. But that, that means that they have to have a really good idea and a really good team. Then there's also adoption, like if it's a neat idea but nobody's going to use it, also it's not going to work. Uh, future proof, what kind of updates need to be done, is it plausible, how, how did the project uh, come up with the funding plan, is there going to be a treasury, is it transparent, are they going to raise a vast amount of money and then have no plans what to do with that. And also future proofing, like what kind of uh, computers and algorithms uh, are developed at a later time, maybe quantum uh, Quantum computing can break some algorithm that they are using. Are, there, are the development teams up to date? Are they following the industry all the time? Will they be able to release an update in a timely manner? 
And of course, uh, security is one thing, and we're going to talk about those consensus algorithms in a while, um, which is the basis of keeping any blockchain secure. You need to have uh, some kind of uh, consensus algorithm that helps the nodes uh, to com come to an um, agreement. So that's the, the briefest explanation I can give you about ICOs, and uh, I will take your questions now. Just one question. Yes. Oh, the chat box is here. Mm. Uh, how do you think the July ban of Google advertising for ICOs will affect the industry? Are you talking about the uh, Facebook ban? Uh, didn't Facebook already ban them? Yeah. Yeah, but Google is banning them next month. Oh, right. You're talking about Google. July, I think. Um, that's a good question. I think it will do good. I, I think it has a positive impact because uh, mostly the, the problem with the advertising is the scams, the obvious scams that do need a heavy advertising. And that's why I skip each and every uh, YouTube ad that is related to crypto because in my experience it's all, it, it's all pure crap. So um, I think it will do good, mostly. I, th I do think a good project doesn't need a marketing budget. I'm, I'm firm on that. What, do you, what they need is uh, proper raising awareness so they can recruit the best possible team, not because uh, it pays well and fast, but because they want to uh, build something and change something. Good question. Yes. I can, I can just add a little bit to that. I, I think it's going to turn more into creating the communities around the, the projects and getting the feedback right there. And, uh, the community actually will approve, is it a good tech, is it a good project, and then we won't need the Facebook ad or, or Google ad to prove it. Yeah. yeah, excellent point. I think that's exactly what's going to happen. The community is going to step up, and because it's, well, normally what the community does is they believe in the project. Of course, most of them will invest, and they have an, uh, thus created an incentive for the project to do well. They don't want the project to do anything shady. They want the project to develop and will do everything to promote it and help uh, wherever they can. So I think that creates a really uh, positive incentive model. More questions? Yes, please. Do you think the ICOs are still gonna stay or people are just gonna move towards just doing airdrops? Because now a lot of countries don't like, not, they don't allow ICO investing to happen, so people are just moving towards airdrops. So what would differentiate this? Interesting question. I, I do think airdrops is a good way to ensure distribution, a wide distribution, especially if you airdrop for like, let's say Bitcoin holders, which is the largest, uh, a group of whole, um, individual coin holders. So that I think that's a good way to ensure that the start is kind of fair, that uh, a certain party doesn't get a huge advantage by scooping up a huge amount of tokens and then leveraging that later by manipulating the market. So in that sense, I do think that it's going to be the future thing. Is it going to happen soon? Not so sure, because right now, a lot of projects will just rather take the Lambo money and, and run because it's easier. You don't have to put so much work in. If you actually have a project that uh, is community driven, you have to put, put in the work before you get the money. Uh, sure, it's, it's nice and democrat democratic, but it won't make you rich quick. It will make you rich slow, it's, which I believe that uh, uh, Warren Buffet said that most people don't understand. That you should try to get rich slow, not quick. Did, did I answer your question? Yeah, in some way. <laughs> Maybe I'll figure out to like form the question better. Uh, ask a follow-up. The follow-up would be because uh, the airdrops re happens to just supply people and then the uh, value of currency increases. So why would they would need to do an ICO if they hold on to a huge amount of tokens, the company hold on to themselves and then let everyone else have free tokens? So why do they even need ICOs at that point? That's the question. Yeah, I don't think they do. I don't think most projects need to do an ICO. 
when when we, would you need the ICO? It's probably a situation where um, all of the team members have like day jobs to stay alive. So to get them working full time, I would uh, consider like a support ICO, for example, for a moderate amount of money, just enough to get the team working full time. I think that's uh, that's more legit than just raising. Uh, raising funding for the next 15 years, which nobody knows what's going to happen in terms of regulation and everything. So that's my opinion. But yeah, air, airdrops are going to, going to be uh, more and more popular, especially because of the reason you mentioned, that there will be a, a pump normally, not only for the coin that gets the airdrop, people tend to buy in that. And then, of course, after the airdrop, there will be a dump because everybody will be selling their free tokens. So that's certainly something you can take advantage of once you know what's going on. Any more questions?